Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Um, today I'm going to be carrying on with some watercolour painting of, um, going to do some birds today. And um, I just wanted to put this in context because the other day we did a um, we did some work on some music paper, some sheet music. Um, this is one that we did and um, the link to the video for this will be in the description below this video if you haven't seen this one. And as well as doing, I did, this one was my trial one and then I did this one on this paper from this little booklet of um, music. This was a, um, Mr. Fargen was, is Henry Fargen, or Harry, um, he was a piano teacher who taught in the Royal School of Music in England, in London. Uh, for 47 years he taught there and he was a, a very um, skilled and interesting um, composer as well and actually quite well known. I hadn't actually heard of him, but I had heard of his sister who was called Eleanor Fargen. And if you've ever heard the song Morning Has Broken, the hymn, she wrote that as well as other music and um, much other stuff. So this is actually, this is 120 years old, this thing, um, and probably I shouldn't have uh, pulled it to pieces, but nevertheless I did. And what I discovered in doing so was that the paper is very good quality and really smooth to paint on, and although I'd painted on it, it is absolutely uncockled. It has no buckling in it whatsoever at all in the slightest. So I'm going to assume that the quality of the paper back then was far higher than nowadays. Um, I'm not totally sure about the way in which paper is made, but I do know it's made from um, obviously cotton. This would have been made from cotton and maybe the quality of the fibres um, back then was greater or perhaps the process was more um, thoughtful and careful. I don't know. I should do some reading up on it to find out. Anyway, so that's the background to that and that. And in the same video at the end, I did this um, watercolour wash on one of the sheets of paper with a view to using it for um, a background. Um, you know how we've been talking about the uh, backgrounds for um, reverse colour, reverse colouring in. And um, so I was had that in mind when I did that. But then I thought, um, well, I thought to myself, I could take a photocopy of it and try things out. So what I did then, I'm just looking for the blank photocopy. What I did was I put it through my photocopier and I did this copy onto um, ordinary copy paper. And you can see it's a bit paler. But that's actually a good thing because it'll be much easier to paint on top of it if it's only at that intensity. And I thought, oh, well, isn't it a shame that I can't photocopy direct onto watercolour paper because my copier won't take thicker paper. And then for some strange and bizarre reason, my husband went shopping and he came back yesterday with a new printer and he's paid something like 70 euros for a printer which is the same as the one we had before, but a newer model. And it takes watercolour paper. So I printed this background onto this. This is a sheet of Canson uh, Clairefontaine Etival paper. And I'm really pleased with the way that came out. I should be able to paint on top of that with no problems. I shouldn't have to um, seal it or anything like that before I put the paint on. I don't think it will make it run. We'll find out uh, when I try it. So. I thought, wow, now this is an elegy, so it's a, a nice song, and then it makes you think about birds. So the next step is, how am I going to think of a design for something to put on here? What can I do um, to make it easier? Because, you know, you look at that and you think, oh, I don't know where to start. So I had a look in one of my um, 
boxes of old paintings. And this is the order in which I did this thinking. And I found this one, which is a little sketchy painting that I did a little while ago. Again, there'll be a link in the description below to this video. And I thought what I need is I need to take a photocopy of that. I don't know what I'd do with that photocopy, to be honest. So I did. And then I um, took a photocopy and I cut all the birds up like this. And then I tried them out on here in different uh, positions. This is sort of just to give me an idea of possibilities because this is definitely one way that you could design a, uh, you know, the next step. And if I did them again, I would probably give them all little open mouths like that so that they would all be singing. So I've played around with that for a little while. They look really cute when they're cut up. I didn't realise how sweet they were. They're really, they're really cute. Um, so then I put them in position and I did another photocopy just to give me an idea of what the, I cut them out and ma made it like that. So obviously I wouldn't do it like that, but it's, um, this is the process of, of designing something as, uh, like I say, so, so there I am at that stage. And then I thought what I need then is I need the sketch. And as you know, all the drawings of the paintings that I do on here are available to you as sketches that you can download for free from um, the website dianenton.com. If you go over there, you can find them and download them. So if you download them to your computer, then you can print them onto um, tracing paper if you want, um, or you can print them onto ordinary paper and then trace them if you want. You know, it's uh, there's lots of possibilities. So that's the original. And obviously I wouldn't want to do it like that, but I could see now if I got my light box out, which is hiding here somewhere. This, you can use a window as well, but a light box is a little bit more handy. Then I can put my paper on top of the tracing, turn on the light box, which I think I have to plug in, and then I can trace directly onto my watercolour paper. I will find my um, cable and plug it in in a minute. And then I thought, okay, well, I like those little birdies, but also there might be some other things that I could do. So I had a look at some of the others, some of my other tracings, and um, it would be quite nice to do one like that, I think. You could have much more in the way of leaves and things like that, and the birds arranged something like that. I thought to myself, that's a good one. And then I've got some cardinals here, and they would look good. They would look very good. That was a nice Christmassy one. So I think that would make quite a nice Christmas card, if, especially if you had a Christmas carol behind, and then you would paint the, the, the um, cardinals on the front. Just have a quick slurp of my coffee. So that's another thought. I didn't think that looked too bad. Um, then we've got a couple of little birdies here, and that would be quite nice. You could put it down the bottom of the paper there like that, and that would be good for a junk journal or a, an altered book or something like that. I thought that was not bad either. And um, then here's another thought. I've got one here. All of these are sketches that are available from the website, by the way, all free, or you can give us a donation if you want, if you want to download them. This is nice too, isn't it? This is just, just a couple of swallows on a branch or a wire or whatever. And that would fit on there quite well. You might change the uh, position a little bit, but um, that would be possible. Then I also have a whole flock of swallows here that you could put on, you know, all of these are just different ideas that you could do on different pieces of background. And then this one, which is quite good too, because if you wanted something really dramatic, a little bit more um, sort of woomph than, than this, depends what you want. You might start with perhaps the little ones. Uh, oh, it started to rain again. Sunny as heck, but raining, honestly. 
Um, yeah, these, these would be really easy. You could do them in silhouette. So just paint them in very, very dark blue indigo or something like that. Um, with uh, lighter areas for the bits that are light or just in, um, silhouetted completely. And that would look really good. Have them flying all over the music. Um, yeah, or as I say, this one, these are three birds. I, I think that is meant to be a cardinal. I'm not sure what they are. Um, so all of these, there are videos for all of them. So that would be helpful. So if you decided you wanted to give this a go, once you've prepared your sheet of paper to paint on with its background, then, you know, go and look, watch the videos and download the sketches and then give it a try. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so here I now have my light box, which um, I've got switched on. And um, I've got the thing I'm going to try to trace, more or less. And then I've got my piece of uh, paper over top here. It's not 100% clear, but I think when I sit down, I'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, this is the actual painting that this is traced from. So I've got that beside me also to give me an idea of where I'm going. I'm not going to exactly trace it, but it's just really basically to show you how you can do it if you want to, and how um, to give me a guide, really, because I haven't done anything like this before, uh, working on this kind of paper, so we'll see how that goes. And I think the first thing to do, the best way to start, is to put in the um, the lines for the, for the branches, which kind of meander all the way down the, through the page like that doesn't have to be anything particular. Um, I'm using a, a B pencil here. That's not to say B-E-E, -E, it's a grade B, uh, which means soft. And I'm just going to draw in the branches that the birds sit on. And um, just lift that up to see where I'm at. And then, so these are a stylized birds there. They are not um, accurate in any way, unlike the other ones that I showed you, which were a little bit more accurate. But I think we'll stick with the whimsical for, for this because uh, this is, as I say, the first time I've done this kind of thing. So let me just pop his eye in here. No, he looks like a fish, that's wrong. Um, his nose is too low and his head's too high, so we can we can erase it. It's not going to cause any problems, I don't think. Yeah, so just get rid of that. And let's come around again. There we are, that's better. And we'll put his little nose up here and his little eye here. It's better. Don't want him to look like a fish. Uh, right, and this one was, let's put his feet in first, just to make sure we get to the right part of the bird. And then we're just basically drawing a egg shape here. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I think the egg. Okay, and then we pop his beak in here, his eye. So that's that one. And then down over here, we're going to put uh, I can see this one better. I think my eyes are getting used to it. So we'll pop him in like that. His little beak is up there. There's his eye and his feet. There we are. And then the leaves and things like that, you can put those on afterwards. You don't need... Um, to do tracing for that so we can remove our light box. All these things are available uh, from Amazon, the things like the light box and everything, if you want to acquire one. Um, this one was about $29, I think, something like that. It's not the best, but it's adequate if you want to go a little bit more into quality, you might need to pay a little bit more. But if you do a lot of tracing, 
it's a really handy thing to have. Okay, so now we decide, having got to this point, how we're going to do this painting. And this one that I did before, I, I did it um, in ink with a dip pen. But I think if I remember rightly, what I did first of all was I painted the birds and I did them um, with, um, I think it was the Kuretake, was it? What was it? What did I use? I used some kind of granulating paint there. I think it was this one, the graphite colours, was it? Okay, well you could do it with this. I think this might be quite nice. So I am going to just quickly turn the camera off and figure out what these paints are going to produce and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so here we are, the different colours that this um, Kuretake graphite colours will produce. I think the key with these paints is to not use them too heavily. And if you allow them to breathe, a little bit of room to spread and so on, um, you will get some quite nice granulations, which could be quite interesting on here. So we have these different colours here, and I'm not going to use all of them. Um, I think probably I'm not going to use this one. This is one that I've called red. This is green. This one is blue-green, and I think I like that one for this, bearing in mind the colour of the background. Uh, this is grey, and this is, um, I don't know what I, I've written there, W grey. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's a different kind of grey. Um, so I'm going to use those three colours for the bodies of the birds. And so first of all, I'm going to just pick up a slightly bigger brush and I'm going to hope and pray that this paper is going to behave. It should do because it's just ordinary watercolour paper. So I'm just going to go into that like that. Then I'm going to pick up some of the blue-grey and just drop it in and see what happens. And we can whoosh it around a bit like that. And I might want to just fill in those little holes and we'll just let it, let it settle. And uh, maybe put a little bit more darker colour on end. Okay, uh, that has, the because this is so yellow underneath, it's kind of tinted it a little bit, which is interesting. Um, this one, I'm just going to put the grey on without wetting the paper. Like that, and see how that works. I can see that this might actually be quite nice for um, embellishment. So I'm just doing it really lightly because I don't know how the paper is going to react. It's not the paper, it's the ink on top of it. So there we are, there's our three birds. And what I have to do now is be patient and let them dry. I might put a little bit more dark down there. I can just see this with nice um, gold or white or various different kinds of embellishments on. So, oh yes, he had wings, didn't he? So we just put his little wings out there. And he's looking a bit circular. So we'll just give him a bit of a up there for his tail and this one too a little bit show me where the tail's going to go okay so we'll let that dry okay so it's not looking very inspiring at the moment but um, do not fear it will be fine in the end I've picked up a um, Fudenosuke Tombow, that is to say, a brush pen. It's got a sort of soft 
nib that gives you uh, thick and thin um, lines because I think probably it's possible to say that my level of uh, unreliability is probably going to be reached fairly quickly here. Um, so let's, I said to myself, let's use something that we can more or less predict for the details of the birds and the surroundings. So that's what we are doing. And this is a nice pen. I like using this. It is kind of has a, um, a lot of personality, plenty of personality, um, but also a certain amount of predictability, which is that's what we want, isn't it? Always from people. That somebody should be plenty of fun, but never take you totally by surprise. So. Um, yeah, I think that sounds ideal. So I'm pressing down and then lifting up to get the finer. And it's nice to have sort of squirrels on something like this, which is musical, isn't it? And uh, you, you might want to put another bird down here, but I think probably what I'll do is I'm going to just bring my sort of light and dark squiggly broken line, which is it's not really broken, it's sort of wonky. That's the thing. I did it last time using a dip pen, but as I say, we will keep our unpredictability level down a little bit. And here we are, the branches for the birds to stand on. Try and make sure the branches go through their feet. Like through the feet, so the feet are standing on them. And um, never fear, we will be embellishing these somewhat. He seems to have a nice wing design going on there, so we will key into that. And uh, let's And then we can put in some leaves. And this is where we can drift off into a world of our own. Just, hello, Mr. Farjan. I hope you don't mind me using your book for this play. is where you get to um, exercise your creativity. I usually find that I'm a bit tentative at first, but after I've been scribbling away for a bit, that's why it's a good idea, isn't it, to do a sort of warm up before you start painting or doing, making your video, you probably would be well advised to just have a little play around first. I think that would be good advice to myself. But, you know, we are under a certain amount of time pressure. I have zero spare time at the moment to do anything else. But that's okay because I don't actually want to do anything else. Um, I don't particularly want to clean the house or do the garden or anything else. I have to from time to time. Um, okay, so maybe we'll put some berries to give this a little bit more life. I always think berries look nice. I expect the birds are quite happy about that too, aren't they? We've got a, a pair of magpies building a nest in our oak tree in the garden. Noticed it this morning. Mr. Magpie was coming in to the nest 
from down below, we've got there's a lot of st sticks and bits and pieces lying around where we've been clearing up some of the winter detritus. And uh, he had a lovely big stick in his mouth and he flew up to the nest and gave it to his wife. And then she said, what do you expect me to do with that? It's far too big. I need something about six inches long with a nice curve to it so that I can put it around the outside of the nest. And while you're down there, if you could just go and get a bit more um, soft stuff. I know there's some dogs down there, so go and get some of their hair. And he said, oh, all right. And off he went, He's strutting around down there, looking for what his wife wants. And so, yes, there we have that. Now, what's the next thing? Oh, he hasn't got a tail, so we better give him a tail. Uh, there we are. And um, I think I might go for my brush pens here to colour this in, just to be on the safe side. So let's find a nice, um, let's do some greens on these leaves. It seems to have been a very long winter to me this year. This time last year, I'd been in England, or I think actually we were in England for a couple of weeks in March because I had to go to see my dentist who has now decided to retire. So I have no idea what I'm going to do now. Anyway, um, and it was only March and all of the things like the the National Trust and all the sort of um, uh, parks and things were all still closed because it was um, still winter time. And I'm just looking, I think I might do these berries in gold. Um, but we managed to find some places to go to. And yeah, but it was, uh, it was sunny and warm. And then we came back here and we had a couple of days of bad weather. And then we had a heat wave. In April, never heard of such a thing. And we had one of the hottest summers we've ever had over here. We had a drought, we had a heat wave, we had a continuation of the drought, we had another heat wave, and it was hotter than it's ever been before. And yeah, it was terrible. Okay, so I wonder if we should... Um, I definitely want to put some decorations on there, but I'm not quite sure what to do yet. He looks as if he could take some gold, doesn't he? Let's put some gold circles on here. So maybe here too on these wings, perhaps. I like the way that when you do this kind of thing, you you sort of have, it, it starts to look a bit like embroidery or um, what do they call it? Uh, brocade, that kind of thing. That sort of fabric, embroidered fabric. Okay, that's uh, something. You can see it's starting to come to life. We 
we could do um, we could do the sort of traditional doodles on here. So come in with with spirals at the bottom, for example. This pen's quite good for that. And where it's lighter, of course, you get contrast coming up, and then maybe. Give him a chest like that, perhaps, and then we could. Then we've got a, a sense of oh, maybe, maybe we'll put some white inside those there. I was looking for information about altered books. Somebody mentioned in one of the comments um, yesterday, do I remember altered books? And I think altered books are out there. They've turned into sort of amazing art form. People spend a huge amount of time altering books. Um, but it, hasn't it kind of turned into, to a certain extent, evolved or morphed into um, junk journals and and embellished journals and things. I, I suppose it's not quite the same thing, but I thought I should have a go at doing some of those. Okay. Um, I'm going to go around the outside edges of the birds with my pen, just to strengthen them up a little bit and to give them a bit more character. So make their feet a little bit bigger and just tidy up the edges, make them a little bit darker. There we are, this one too. bottom part of their mouths, the beaks a little bit darker. And as you know, these birds are not meant to be realistic. So, so they won't be, but they might be cute if we can make it work. Or if not cute, then at least interesting. And fun. A few people have said they've got these um, Kiritaki graphite paints and they don't know quite what to do with them and I think that's a common thing. I did see a video once where somebody was using them when they hadn't been out very long and she used them very heavily. I'm not sure whether it really showed them off to their best advantage being used very dark because they just look black. So I'm going over the twig now and I just thought I could make that a bit darker and a bit more spiky. I think this would be an ideal subject for a reverse colouring project, don't you? Yeah, 
Well, that stands out nicely. I think using using the black is a, a good idea for. I mean, we're exploring this together, you know, because as I say, I have never seen anything like this before. Um, I think this one needs some white in his wings, just to be, I keep thinking I'm going to smudge it, but I think it's more or less dry. benefit of doing something with these pens rather than paints, you know, do the paint bit and then you can sit in front of the telly or whatever uh, and just do this part of it. I have got um, bronze here. I don't know whether it would be nice to add some of that to the wings, for example, the copper colour or whatever. I could have used the paint. We've got the starry colours and I've got Etcher's gold paints as well. I could have used that, but the pens, sometimes the pens are a little bit more controllable. So, well, they're always more controllable. Well, I think we're coming to the end here. There are so many things you could do with this project, this idea of photocopying something like this onto music, onto watercolour paper, and uh, and see what happens, basically. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to leave it here. And, uh, um, yeah, see what you think. See what you think. Give it a try. And don't forget, you can... Go to the website and download all the sketches and all the information is in the description below. So I'll let you go and uh, have fun with that. Bye for now everybody, bye bye.